With the release of PLS Pull version 15.50, Powerline Systems is happy to announce that our foundation design software, Kason, has been integrated within PLS Pull. Kason is a PLS application used for the analysis and design of moment-resisting reinforced concrete pier foundations and direct embedded poles. The integration of Kason within PLS Pull allows for a streamlined design and analysis of pole structures and their associated foundations within a single PLS application. For more information regarding Kason, please see the link below to our products page on our website. Kason uses ultimate strength design concepts for both the structural design of the pier and its sizing to avoid soil failure. All analysis and design assumptions are described in the Kason user's manual, which is available upon request from Powerline Systems. The theoretical basis of the program is described within the paper titled An Analysis and Design of Laterally Loaded Piles and Caissons in a Layered Soil System, and is the basis of an adaptation of Brahms' method that uses a layered soil system to predict foundation behavior. Please see the video link below that showcases recent updates to the Caisson application. The example shown below utilizes a double circuit tangent steel pole structure that is named SPOEX12 and ships with the PLS pole software. This example is typically located the file path shown below. Within PLS pole, additional functions have been added to geometry, miscellaneous, foundation strength. The left side of the foundation strength table remains the same. However, the eight columns on the right side of this table have been added. The new columns in the foundation strength table contain input and information for the Kason model. Run Kason design and analysis columns contain a yes no toggle. When no is selected, the foundation strength will be based on the nominal capacity values to the left of the table. When yes is selected, the foundation strength will be based on the calculated capacity based on caisson. Pure pole diameter is the diameter to be used for the caisson model. Typically this value is the diameter of the concrete pier or effective pole diameter being used for the direct embedded pole. You can also set this value to zero or leave blank and have caisson calculate this value. Solving for this value comes with the caveat in that you will have to enter either the pier pole diameter or the pier hole depth. The next two columns are for your reference when making a determination for the diameter to use for your foundation. The maximum pole diameter is obviously the maximum pole diameter for the pole, and the anchor bowl cage diameter is specified within the base plate within the steel pole properties. This value is only populated if the base plate has been modeled and a base plate isn't required for caisson. Looking at these two reference diameters, I'm going to use 10 feet for this concrete pier. The pier reveal is the exposed length of the pier. For this foundation, I'm going to use 2 feet. The pier hole depth is the embedded depth of the foundation. By entering a value, you can check a defined embedment or set this value to zero or leave blank and have this value designed for you. Rebar type defines the size and type of the rebar to use for the vertical rebar of the pier, and the rebar quantity, quantity defines the quantity of the rebar to use. For this foundation, I'm not quite sure what rebar I want to use yet, so I'm going to leave it blank and have Kason provide options for rebar types based on minimum seal requirements. A new menu option has been added to PLS Pull located at Geometry, Miscellaneous, Soil and Kason settings. This function has input options for the soil and foundation properties used in Kason. The Kason geometry options include embedment depth increment and diameter increment used within the design mode of Kason. The Kason material options include input values for the concrete compressive strength and steel properties of the concrete pier. 
Caisson calculation options include lateral soil resistance options and a value for the bearing transfer distance. For more information on these input values, please see the Caisson manual or the Caisson video. The soil layers table requires the user to input properties for the various layers at the site of the proposed foundation. These properties can be obtained by a standard soil boring or other soil data resources. These values include soil type, layer thickness, layer density, and layer soil strength properties. Only two typical soils, cohesive and non-cohesive, are considered within Kason. Cohesive soils are those characterized by their cohesive strength and are denoted by, as type clay. Non-cohesive soils that are characterized by their angle of internal friction are denoted as sand. If you want to ignore the depth of a soil in the calculation for the reactions, then you must enter a strength value of 0 PSF for the cohesive soil or an angle of internal friction of negative 90 degrees for a non-cohesive soils. And if you have your Soil data properties already formatted in a spreadsheet or other format. You can always copy and paste this data into the soil layers table. And click OK. Let's see what we got. You can now see that the caisson is now graphically displayed at the bottom of the steel pole. So let's, our caisson is now built. Let's go model run. And we can see that we now have a foundation, maximum foundation usage of 99.8% within our, for our foundation design. If we go down and check out our foundation usage tables, we can see our 99.8 with our wind load case as our controlling load case. And we can also see some of our rebar requirements that we'll, we can use for number 8 bars or number 14 bars and those are quantity and spacing for the different size bars. Um, let's also go into the analysis so we can take a look at our controlling wind case and into our foundation designs for this load case and if you remember we actually left our embedded depth as zero and had case on solve for that and we can see we have a 10 foot diameter and a 38 foot embedded depth and then we had our two foot reveal so you can see our 40 foot total length and you can kind of see some of the results from uh, the case on run of SP OEX 12. Let's look at another example featuring a direct embedded wood pole structure. There is a PLS CAD Lite example project named Tangent.LOA that ships with the software and is typically located at the file path below. This PLS CAD Lite model has been set up with 300 foot spans, partridge conductor, and sag per the auto sagging criteria. Let's open up the pole model and review the direct embedded portion of, of the pole that has been modeled. As you can see, the pole, pole diameter used is 1.1 feet, is just greater than the maximum pole diameter, and the embedded depth used is 7 feet, and is directly taken from the wood pole components library. For the 50 foot pole used in this example, that value is the typical 10% plus 2 embedment depth. A soil profile has also been completed for this pole. Reviewing this pole model, we can conclude that the direct embedded wood pole portion has been modeled, and we can check this pole within PLS CAD Lite. If we look at the summary report, we can see that the direct embedded foundation was checked and has a usage of 94.27% under the NESC rule 250C. I hope you can see from these two examples that Kason is a fast and interactive foundation design and analysis software. Therefore, the effects and changes in pier diameter, safety factors, material strengths, or even loading changes can be studied quickly within the PLS applications.
for news, information, and online libraries for our software, please see our website at www.powline.com. To obtain more information, you can email us at info at powline.com. To obtain a quotation for our software, you can email us at sales at powline.com. And for all technical support questions, please email support at powline.com.